If you're between the ages of 18 and 24, this video could save you years of your life. I'm Archer, a medical student currently on a gap year, and right now I'm the COO of an edtech startup called I Can Study. In this video, I'll be sharing five life lessons I would love to give to my 18 year old self. Now, before diving into the first lesson, the reason why I wanted to make this video is because people say that the years between 18 and 24 should be the best years of your life. But I've also realized that this is also when you can feel the most loss. And this was the case for me. When I was 18, I went straight into university, into med school, thinking that this is just what everyone does, right? And by blindly following the path that was you know, laid out by society, I quickly felt lost as I started to just question about why I was doing this. I remember that I felt like I didn't have full control of the situation and it was almost like I was on a train, but I didn't decide to board it myself. And so now years later, I've realized so many important lessons the hard way that I wish that I could really go back and just tell my 18 year old self these certain things. These things, they would have made the younger, young archer uh, much more happy, much more productive. And honestly, it would have just given me much more direction and clarity in life, which would have saved me years. And, and so that's what I hope that I can provide to you in just this video. So first up is one of the most valuable lessons I have learned and it is a concept known as positional decision-making. On average, we make around 35,000 decisions a day. And so positional decision-making, it allows us to turn more of those decisions into better decisions. And so positional decision-making is the sole reason for why I'm living a life now that I feel pretty happy and content with. When you're 18, there are so many big decisions that you have to make. For me, it was like, well, should I go to university? Like what course should I study? You know, should it be anything else in medicine? Like what if I don't, what if I pick a career? I don't like it. What if I have to then move out? And what do I do then? You know, these things, they were very stressful for me at the time because it's like the first time ever that I've had to think about some of these really tough decisions. And I know that I really wanted to make the perfect decision so that I would be happy 10 years from now and I wouldn't be regretting my life entirely. You know, you always see those people on TV, they're like 12 years old, you know, they've already completed their university degree and achieved everything, you know, and, and I was always comparing myself to that person and thinking like, why can't I just be like them? And so I'd always compare myself to that sort of person, even though it's an impossible thing, it didn't matter. I still felt really bad about myself because of that sort of unrealistic goal. But what we really quickly realize is that life just doesn't work out that way. It's just very, very unlikely that that's just going to happen. So what I've learned over time is that we can't make the perfect decision, but we can make positional decisions which is the closest to perfect that you are going to get. To explain positional decision-making, let's consider chess. Now, don't worry, this is gonna be easy to understand. When there is a chess game, there are many moves that you can make and every decision leads you down a completely different game. And there are more chess game variations than actually atoms on earth. <laughs> so this is why we often hear pro chess players say, you know, I can't exactly know what the outcome is going to be 80 moves into the future. But right now I can make the move that's going to put me in the most advantageous position. So they might go ahead, they move some pawns, they move some knights because those pieces can engage sooner. They're covering more lines. By making a series of decisions that sets up their future selves, they are more likely to be in a position where they'll make the winning move. And this is the essence behind positional decision-making. You can't always have the best outcome in life, but you can always make the best positional decision that will set up your future self. So you might be wondering, what are some examples of positional moves? Now, it can be really small things like choosing between water and Coca-Cola, but there is one positional move that everyone should do. And this is what I'll be talking about in lesson two, which is grades don't matter, but this thing really does. In primary school, I was actually getting around some Bs and Cs and maybe one or two As at maximum. But by the end of school, I ended up scoring in the top 0.05% of my entire country. But I didn't do this just for high grades. Instead, I was focused on the best positional move that anyone can make, which is learning how to learn. 
And then as you do that, good grades come as a byproduct. Learning the content for a subject, you know, that might be useful, but learning how to learn is transferable to anything because anything that you wanna do in the future, you're gonna to need to learn how to do it in the first place. So actually learning is what I believe to be the key to extreme success, which is why I keep investing in it so much, because it is the main difference between your true potential and where you are right now. And the difference between others who succeed more than not, I believe is how fast you can learn from your experiences. And that's why Cal Newport, you know, he says all the time, one of the biggest superpowers in the 21st century is the ability to quickly master hard things. I actually think about this quite a lot. You know, my, the generation that our parents are in, they, they are in a generation where a, having a university degree, it would clearly differentiate you from other people. But now when we're in a world where, you know, almost everyone in the Western world, they have a university degree. And specifically, if you're applying for a certain job, they probably all have the same university degree. Now, what are they gonna actually go ahead and differentiate you on? You know, you need to really differentiate yourself now through other means. And when it comes to hiring, the three biggest things that I see as a COO is that it's about character, it's about skills, and it's about experience. Character is looking about who really are you and how do you actually choose to lead your life and do we see that, you know, your values through your beliefs, but also your actions. And then it's about your skills, right? What skills have you actually developed? And then the experience to back that up to say, hey, you've done this before and you can do it again. As a part of my job, I have to actually engage in hiring quite regularly. And I see all of these things as incredibly important, but as a small little tip, the biggest thing that I actually see is actually character. It is something that breaks or makes interviews all of the time because if you really think about these kind of soft skills, what's easier to teach someone? Uh, can you teach someone to be honest? Is that really easy? Or is it easier to actually teach them the skills of data science or data analytics or whatever it might be? So the way that you differentiate yourself is primarily through learning. You know, learning to develop your character, your skills, your experience. And it is not just learning. It's actually specifically knowing how to learn so you can learn all of these things faster and better than anyone else. That is why learning to learn is one of the most positional plays you can ever make. And for situations like this, something that has greatly helped me is Skillshare. As someone who is as passionate about learning how to learn, I found the classes on Skillshare to be incredibly valuable. Each class is led by industry experts who have spent years mastering their craft and condensing their knowledge for you so you get the lessons without the scars. Right now, I'm taking Ali Abdal's Notion Masterclass. Uh, it's been incredibly helpful in helping me in new ways to systematize and organize kind of my productivity and, and organization. And as the largest online learning platform, Skillshare offers courses on virtually everything. You know, not just productivity, but also film, design, writing, jazz, and much more. One of the favorite features on Skillshare for me is learning parts. These are curated sequential class collections that help you master specific skills like productivity by tailoring the learning experience to your starting point, allowing you to see clearer progress as you go. The top students that I have coached are always the ones who keep trying to level up their learning. So if you are ready to take your learning to the next level, Skillshare and I have a special offer for you. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Sign up now using the link in the description. Now, learning is very important, but not just in an academic context. In fact, there are so many lessons that I have learned just by talking to people building friendships and building relationships with other people. And one of the most powerful yet hardest lessons that I have learned was that actually a lot of my problems could be solved by a hard conversation. Throughout school, I actually struggled with socializing with deep friendships. You know, my emotional intelligence, it really wasn't the best. I've had to learn it. Um, and I've heard friends who are very close to me before in high school because I couldn't read the room. An example of this is that I didn't really take initiative before, you know, especially with the best friend that I had at the time in high school. Uh, he wasn't even at my high school, but you know, I remember that he sat me down and he was basically like, Hey man, I, I actually don't think that you value this relationship. And I was quite shocked because I was like, well, I, you know, I, I thought I do like in my, my brain, it's like kind of, I, I do really value this relationship, but clearly it wasn't coming across in that way. And, and my friend didn't feel valued. So 
This was a pivotal moment for me because I, I'd realized that I really got to change things if I wanted to keep this friendship. And actually by taking action from that moment, it meant that we had now kindled kind of this friendship that is now something that's been going for you know, almost a decade and it's something I'm super, super grateful for. But the reason that I'm telling you this is because the lesson that I learned is that I can no longer wait to have these conversations reactively. My friend did not need to have this conversation with me. He believed enough in me and looked out enough for me so that he would actually tell me that thing. Most of the time, people don't tell you this feedback. It's really hard for them. They don't want people putting themselves under this amount of stress. But when you have a friend like that, you, you know they've got your back. And that matters a lot. Now, I have these conversations proactively all the time now. I have it with my friends, my family, and even in business. It's, it's a requirement. Because if I don't tell someone that they are not doing something up to par, then they will not know. And if I really but like care about them and I want to see them win and I know that it is their goal that they want to improve, then this sort of feedback is going to be the thing that they're wanting to hear the most. It truly means that you have their back. And if I think about even just like relationships, for example, with my girlfriend, right? If I don't have this sort of conversation, there is going to be resentment that builds up and then we're going to have this grudge against each other and it's really not going to help us. So I really think about if, if you truly care about that person, you have their best interest at heart and you'll do it for them. And, and it's just something that has like changed my life so many times. It's a really important lesson that I've learned. And I think for us, it is something that has really enriched our re relationship because we have this healthy relationship that is built on healthy communication. And that's what I think it's about. You know, I hear from my friends and family um, all, all the time now as well, that they really do appreciate that they know that I'm, I'm willing to bring up these conversations in the interest of them rather than shying away from it if they really needed to hear it. And so now I'm in a position where, you know, I can go to a new city. I can go ahead and make new friends at a new workplace. I can even network with big CEOs and, you know, executives of companies of the like, like Google. And it's now become this more natural part of my life. And these, these friendships, these relationships that I'm forming, you know, they tell me that this is something that they really appreciate about being in interaction with me. And it's actually something that's really important to our, our kind of relationships. Once you start implementing the lessons from above, such as the positional decision-making and having hard conversations, you'll quickly see that reality is negotiable. When I started looking into entrepreneurship during my gap year, I had to talk to some people, I had to really think about this huge risk that I was about to undertake. And what I realized is that I could create whatever life I really wanted and it was far more possible than what I thought you know, could happen. That's how I eventually got into I Can Study, where I worked my way up, you know, I started as a coordinator, and now I'm in the position where I have the ability to influence the company's direction to have a significant influence on any of the students who entrust their education with us. And as now the COO, I take a huge responsibility with that. I think about this as my social responsibility because when you think about doctors, the, the whole thing is about saving lives, right? Um, it's about life or death. When I think about education and as an educator, it's all about the life or death of that student's potential, their potential future. And if anything, I think that can be something that's much more because there's this, this whole sense of you know regret and an opportunity of what could be. So as I went through this, I, I realized that this series of decisions about taking the gap here, it opened up doors that I could not have even imagined in the first place. And this meant that I could work with some of the biggest brands in the world, like Google, and I've been invited to present at top universities like Oxford, you know, even just starting this YouTube channel itself, it's changed my life because I've been able to work with people like Ali Abdal, Dr. Justin Sung, and I've met with many other incredible people and creators who are also creating their own reality. Going forward, I want to share this with everyone as well. My personal mission is to become one of the best business people in the world so that I can grow valuable companies and actually change the world along the way. And this is the big reason for why I want to drive the mission of I Can Study. You know, I became very passionate about this after knowing what learning did for me. My dad has had always had poor health during my upbringing. And what it meant is that if I could learn to learn better, I could have more time with my dad as his health was declining. And a really big thing for me is even just last year, you know, I was in India, I was speaking to lots of students um, who watched this channel, you know, part of the I Can Study world as well. And there were students who had traveled 16 hours on a train just to come and see us and say hello. And again, it was 
what made me realize the social responsibility that there really is in being an educator and why it's something that we have to take incredibly seriously. I think about it as the bare minimum, that if someone's coming up to me and asking me for advice, they're asking for a question, they are entrusting their future with me and the very least that I can do is show them the respect that I've taken this very seriously and I'm trying to do my very best to give them the best answer possible. So being in business for me allows me to scale these certain unique skills that I've developed at scale in something that I'm very passionate about and that actually can have a true impact on a lot of people in a unique way to me. And this is why I focus a lot on business as well is because it allows me to use my unique strengths in a way where I'm able to amplify my impact on the world. This experience, it has opened up my mind to what is truly possible. Every time I thought something was not possible, I ended up trying it and then it ended up being possible. Sometimes our goals may take longer than they're expected or it may be much, much, much harder than expected. But what I've realized is that reality is always negotiable. If you're watching a video like this, you're probably pretty ambitious and you wanna go that extra mile, especially when there isn't that path that is paved out for you. So I have one final piece of advice that is specifically for you, which is that if you want to be exceptional, then by definition, you need to be the exception. For example, when I started out in business and in entrepreneurship, people were always like, why do you have to be different, Archer? You know, why can't you just focus on medicine? Well, the thing is, is that I am not just here to just do medicine. I wanna make myself the very best version of myself possible so that I can truly achieve transformational things, not only for myself, but for anyone that I interact with. I think it is a, a, of a service that I can do for other people. And this sort of sentiment towards me has happened for my entire life. You know, I even remember when I was in primary school, in early high school, I always get friends who would get very annoyed at me for doing more things than they were. And really, I, I don't know why it mattered to them so much because it was my life. But I, when I think about it, I, it comes down maybe to the fact that maybe it made other people see themselves in a way that they didn't like and then that they realized they weren't necessarily proud of what they were doing. Because I think about it as like, well, why else would you want to bring me down? You know, you're supposed to be my friend. You're supposed to be rooting for me. But just because I'm doing something that is more than you, it's not necessarily something that they like. So when you go down the path that you pay for yourself, you will become an outcast, but that is the cost of it. And if you think about it, what's really the alternative? You know, the biggest regret of dying people is always that they say, you know, I wish I had the courage to live the true life to myself and not what life others expected of me. And that's why you should stop caring what other people think. So those are my five big lessons for anyone who's feeling lost and wanting to get ahead in life. These things have been incredibly important for me. I cannot understate that. And this video has always sort of been a way for me to share, you know, some more of these thoughts that aren't directly related to studying. So you can see a little bit more about what's happening behind the scenes in my life. I wanted to be a little bit more vulnerable here as well. So if you do want to see more videos like this, please, please do let me know in the comment section below. Um, I truly hope that, you know, you're able to make the most out of every day now after watching this video. Thank you for watching and take care.